and welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and really try to explain it in a very simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum. So when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today's episode I'm going to be introducing circuits and currents. <laughs> to start it's important to know that atoms are made up of subatomic particles like electrons and protons. Electric charge <laughs> is a basic property of electrons, protons and other subatomic particles. So electrons are negatively charged whereas protons are positively charged. An electrical current is the flow of charge around a circuit but it can only flow if the circuit is complete. This means it needs to have a source, which is where the flow of charge will originate from. And a circuit also has to have a point where the charge can leave, and this is called the return or the earth ground. It's called the return because the charge always ends up back at the source when it's completed its path of the electrical circuit. Because it's a circuit! In an electrical circuit, the moving charges are electrons, which have a negative charge. This means that they flow the opposite way to the direction of a conventional current, which is annoying, only because on circuit diagrams you draw little arrows showing the direction of the current, which is always positive to negative. But electrons got to be difficult and negatively charged, which means that they travel around the circuit the other way around, negative to positive. All right, there's the backstory. Fact numero uno. The current does not get used up as it flows around the circuit. So it doesn't run out or anything. The total current in a circuit is always the same. Oh, cool. And lastly, the SI unit for current is amps. Electric current covered. Now onto the potential difference. Now this part's got potential. So in a circuit, the battery acts like a pump. It provides the driving force to push the current around the circuit. So in this example, where the battery is the pump, the current would be the water. This driving force produced by the battery is called potential difference. If you increase the potential difference, more current would flow, just like if you open the pump more, more water would flow out. Got it? Different batteries have different potential differences, and you can also put more than one battery together to create a larger potential difference. Ooh. To find the total potential difference, just add all of the battery's potential differences together. Symbols. So, if I had four 1.5 volt batteries, and by the way, volts is the SI unit for potential difference, then my total potential difference would be 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, or you could just do 1.5 times four, but the total potential difference would be six volts. All good things come in threes. So there's been the current, there's been the potential difference, and now it's on to the resistance. Resistance is anything in a circuit that slows down the flow of current, and it's measured in ohms. Um. We calculate the resistance by dividing the potential difference by the current. Ta-da! So this means that as long as the potential difference stays the same, so you use the same battery, the higher the resistance of a component, the smaller the current flowing through it. But here is a prime opportunity for us to use our triangle. If we do this and we create it with potential difference at the top and resistance and current along the bottom, then this means that we can work out either of the other two parts of the equation when we need to as well. Hooray for the triangle! Okay, so last fact of the day here, and I actually covered this in a bit more detail in my superconductors episode. Conductors are materials that allow electricity to flow through them easily, like metals. 
whereas insulators are materials that don't allow electricity to pass through them easily, like wood. Alrighty, so the lower the resistance of a component, the better it will be at conducting electricity. So conductors will have less resistance than insulators. Okay, but even further to that, different conductors will have different resistances, so some conductors will be better than others. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I will try to do a video for you.